Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and welcome to the 16th video in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your own 3D Endless Runner game in Unity. In this tutorial we'll be covering a background for our main menu and we'll work on a fade screen to integrate with our start button. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload. Feel free to leave a comment or drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel, and you'll also find all the scripts and the assets to this series there too, along with plenty of other things. You can also now join as a free member. Now, on with the tutorial. So, obviously at the moment our main menu is very bare. It's basic, it doesn't really have much going for it. Now the idea of what I want to do is I want to have a central kind of screen um, based on whatever level that we are currently coming out of. So for example, if we're in the desert level and we come out of it, we want to have a desert background. If we are in an ice level and we come out of that ice level, I want to have an ice background. And if you play Timmy and Mousy, you'll know exactly what I mean. A uh, link is in the very first video of this series, or if you're watching the full version of this tutorial at some point, it's in the pinned comment anyway. Um, and the idea of what we'll get to is we'll end up making the menu shift from side to side whenever we click different buttons, you know, for achievements or when we go to the store. Uh, but for now, we're just going to kind of bring in a background here that we can use. And instead of recreating backgrounds and, you know, dragging and dropping again, what we can actually do is if we go to our desert run scene and let's go to our start segment and I'm actually going to just copy that start segment and I'm going to go back to main menu and drop it in here. Now at the moment, if we go to game view, you can see it looks like this, but I kind of want to pivot it a little bit. I want it to kind of look at the mountains rather than the actual uh, forward facing way that we have. And what we can do is just rotate by 90 degrees, go to game view, and now we can see that the menu itself does look like it is something different. So it's all about working with our camera now to put it in the right place. So let's bring it up, let's pivot it uh, down a little bit on the X. And I think I'm going to get rid of a couple of things here. Let's get rid of this crate that we still haven't got a texture for. But essentially what we need to do is we need to build it up from side to side. Because what will happen, let me get the main camera just there. So let's pretend we're going to click the store button uh, in a later tutorial. What will happen is that the position of the X, uh, the camera, will shift this way just to give it a bit more immersiveness. So what we need to do is quickly build up side to side of all of this area. And it's up to you how you do it. I'm just going to quickly do it so we can move on with the tutorial. I'm not going to waste too much time. But essentially, just build up a nice area for, for whatever you want it to be like that. That's fine. So I'm going to take the start segment and just shift over a little bit more. Um, take it again and shift it over here. So now this is starting to look a bit more like a functional main menu. There's actually something going on here now. Uh, let's rename these segments and put uh, seg1. Uh, let's have this as seg2 and seg3. If you wanted to, you could put uh, your character in there as well. Uh, I think it just depends on you know what animations you have within your game. If you wanted Timmy to just appear there, you know, uh, dancing or whatever like he does in Timmy and Mousy, you can go back to Mixamo and just import uh, like another animation for him. For now I'm just going to drag and drop Timmy there. I'm going to turn him around 180 degrees and it looks a bit odd so work with the camera, get it in the right position and then uh, when you're happy that's when you can indeed move on. So let's bring it down, bring it in closer in fact, maybe I might pan the camera upwards from the ground a little bit. Maybe I should give it that immersion. Mm, move Timmy a bit more. See, this is the bit where you basically refine a lot of things now and get things how you want it to be. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a fade screen for our button. Because at the moment when we press our button to go to our game, it just takes us straight there. It's a bit weird. So we want a kind of delay and a fade out to our game that takes us there. Uh, so what we'll do is let's add uh, a script or add to a script that will allow us to modify that. Uh, let's go to our scripts. Let's go to main menu and let's open it up in Visual Studio. So the idea of what we're doing here is a coroutine and that'll be basically just delaying for let's say 
60 frames, so one second while we wait for the screen to fade out, and then we'll create the fade screen. So if we go to the bottom bit here, and after we've done start game, what we'll say is I enumerator, and essentially, um, just to kind of go back a little bit, oh yes, thank you Visual Studio. Uh, on Collision Detect, it's the same thing here where we did the coroutine for Collision End. It's the exact same principle here. We do this in a coroutine because we want to wait for a given amount of time. So I enumerator, start button, oh, close bracket, open curly bracket, and then yield, return, new, wait for seconds, and in brackets, one. And what we'll do is we will take this scene manager.load scene from here, cut it out of there, and place it inside this start button section. And then in void start game, what we'll do is we will say start co routine, and in brackets, the name of the co routine. So open brackets, start button, open close bracket, close bracket, semicolon, and save. So at this point, what we'll do is we will go back into Unity, allow it to compile, and we'll create the fade screen next. If we were to press this now, it would, it would press, then it would wait for a second, and then it would go to our game. So we need to be able to create the fade screen that allows us to essentially fade out. So let's go back to our scene view, then let's go to game object, let's go to UI and raw image. Let's set the coloring to black or whatever color you would want it to be. Let's uh, stretch the object every direction and then zero, 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 zero. Let's zoom out, rename to fade out. And let's go to animations, then the animation tab and click on create. We'll call this uh, MM fade out because this is the main menu. And let's press the record button and let's set the first keyframe. So the first keyframe is going to be alpha zero. So make sure you do set alpha as zero as the first keyframe. And then go to whatever frame you want. So if you want one second, 60 frames, two seconds, 120 frames, and so on. So frame 60, and we'll set the alpha as 255. And we've done this kind of stuff before. Uh, so let's press the record button again to stop. And the idea of what we're doing here is using multiple different things that we've learned in different parts of this series, bring it all together to create the desired effect. So we need to untick loop time because we don't want it to loop. And then if we go back to our script, uh, we can declare this as a variable. So serialize field, and it is a game object, and we'll just call it fade out, semicolon. And as soon as we start the coroutine of start button, we actually need to say fade out dot set active and true. We don't need to turn it off again because by the time it goes off, we'll have moved scenes anyway, so it's irrelevant. Uh, so let's save this. And if you have any problems with this script, I will put this exact script in the pinned comment. If you click on the link there, you'll be able to download this script for free. Let's head back into Unity. And let's go into our main menu controls button, uh, object right there. And let's attach the fade out right there. And let's press play and make sure that this works as intended. So as we go in, we should be able to see, oh, actually it will fade out. Of course, we need to turn off fade out first, otherwise it's gonna look a bit strange. So let's try that again. Fade out turned off. This should work as intended perfectly. So all good, yep, we're in our menu, so start game. It will fade out and we should go to our game. Perfect. So that sequence is starting to come together quite nicely at this point. Uh, but what we'll do next time is we will add more to this. So we'll add a fade in to the main menu, a nice quick fade in. We'll add some more buttons and we'll add some sound effects. So we'll work with um, audio and whenever we press the button, we'll have a sound effect play just to give it that bit of immersive um, kind of feedback, I guess you could call it. Um, and from there, basically, we'll keep working and make sure everything can integrate quite nicely. 
So uh, remember to subscribe and don't forget to click on the notification bell to stay up to date with every single tutorial still to come in this series. And I will see you next time.